Hello again everyone. So this is part three of the lecture series for Plants and Human Affairs to replace the in-class lectures that were to take place on the 18th of September 2012. So we talked about um, some of the major organelles and the cell wall and the plasma membrane in plant cells in the last lecture. And so I'd like to continue on and talk about some other membrane systems in the cell. So the plasma membrane is part of a membrane system. And then we talked about organelles, the chloroplast, mitochondria, and vacuole, which are surrounded by membranes, but they're not part of what's called the membrane system. And so I wanna talk a little bit more about um, other membranes that are, are a part of that membrane system. So there are two other um, um, membranes that are part of the whole system in a plant cell, again associated with the plasma membrane, and that in the nucleus as well, and that is the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus. The endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, they're collectively sort of involved in the synthesis, packaging, and transporting of materials within the cell. Okay, so they move things around on the inside of the cell. And here you can see that the endoplasmic reticulum here, we'll sh I'll talk to about the Golgi body in just a second, but there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's a rough endoplasmic reticulum and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is sort of coated in little these little black dots, and these little black dots are called ribosomes. And these ribosomes are really, really important for protein synthesis. In other words, this is where all of those really, really important proteins in your body are actually synthesized to begin with. And then what happens is you have this other type of endoplasmic reticulum, which is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And you can't really see any ribosomes here. There are no little dots that are the ribosomes in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And what the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does is it starts packaging and then starts the transportation of proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum also synthesizes lipids okay, as well. So it's um, these two different types of uh, ER or endoplasmic reticulum are really, really important in general for protein synthesis, but they also in and of themselves have slightly different functions. Rough has ribosomes and is responsible for protein synthesis. Smooth packages those proteins and starts their transportation and also synthesizes lipids. Now if we look at the Golgi apparatus, what the Golgi apparatus is, is it takes those proteins that the endoplasmic reticulum started to transport and it stores and modifies those proteins. Okay, so so the, the rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes the proteins. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum starts to package them and begins the transportation of those proteins, those packaged proteins, to the Golgi apparatus, right? The smooth endoplasmic reticulum also produces lipids that are also moved over to the Golgi apparatus. And then what the Golgi apparatus is, is that it can store those packaged proteins, or it can modify them slightly, or it can repackage them in different combinations. Um, and then what it does is it has these little vesicles that it pinches off of itself and it moves those proteins to wherever it is that the cell needs them. Okay, so it is the primary transportation system. It's almost like the rough endoplasmic reticulum is um, the production facility and then there is a um, a very short transport system that moves the proteins from the productions uh, from the production facility to the the distribution center, which is the Golgi apparatus. So the sort of that intermediary area is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and then the um, distribution center is the Golgi apparatus, where things are organized, maybe slightly packaged a little bit differently for for different parts of the cell or for different needs of the cell. And then they, the Golgi apparatus sends off small packages of these 
really well organized proteins now to different areas of the cell to be used. Okay, so it, it's funny because even in the Golgi apparatus, like a Golgi in the Golgi apparatus, a carbohydrate might be added to a protein too. So that's what I kind of mean by sort of this this packaging. So it can can take it can allow for the production of also more complex molecules from those proteins that are then transported throughout the cell. So the Golgi apparatus is extremely important in that regard. Okay, another really important part of the membrane system is the nucleus. And of course, everybody knows um, that the nucleus is um, the structure the, uh, within the cell that contains the hereditary information of the cell. So this is where you have um, the structure of DNA, so you have nucleic acids forming DNA, and then um, that DNA is in um, in chromosomes. Okay, that um, the DNA also consists of of proteins as well. So there are proteins in there. There's a generally a nucleolus within the nucleus. So here's the whole nucleus. There's generally a nucleolus within the nucleus that forms ribosomes that are transported to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is where protein synthesis happens, and then on down the line. The DNA contains, uh, that's found within the nucleus, contains genes, and genes contain instructions for the assembly of different amino acids, and then those amino acids are then packaged into units called proteins. Okay? So that's essentially the function of this system. It's important that all, in, all newly formed cells have the instructions encoded in the DNA to function properly. Okay? In plants, all cel cells have nearly the same genetic information. Okay? And so we'll talk about how it is that genetic information is passed on a little bit later. One of the cool things about this membrane system, again, it consists of um, the plasma membrane, it consists of the endoplasmic reticulum, both rough and smooth. It consists of the Golgi apparatus, and it consists of the nuclear envelope. And one of the things that's really interesting is that this membrane is like, almost like a connection from the central part of the cell or the nucleus all the way out to the periphery of the protoplast or the plasma membrane. And a lot of people have wondered, well, how is it that this membrane system developed? And there are a couple of different hypotheses about that. So if we think about chromosomes, old, old, old ancestral cells contain chromosomes. So say this is the ancestor of all the eukaryotes that exist on the planet. These chromosomes existed. Chromosomes evolved first. Here's a picture of the plasma membrane that surrounded the cell. Now in plants, that plasma, mem plasma membrane would also have a cell wall, but not in the early, early, early eukaryotes. Okay, so don't get confused by that. Okay, so here you have an ancestor of the early eukaryotes. Here are its chromosomes, okay, which evolved before the, mem the complex membrane system of the cell. And then they think that it is in the infoldings of the plasma membrane that started to create the membrane system. And that these, in these infoldings of the membrane eventually form the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus, all of which are eventually sort of pinched off and exist as sort of these separate membranes. Like I call them separate, separate but connected and, and functionally important different kinds of membranes that then move things, synthesize and move things around in the cell. There's an evolutionary advantage to having this membrane system and to having the nucleus sort of protected, uh, or the chromosomes sort of protected within the, within the envelope. Um, it does a number of things. It separates the processes of um, transcription and translation, which we'll talk about later. That is, it separates the function, uh, it se separates the process of transcribing the DNA from DNA to RNA. And, and that is separate from the translation of that RNA into amino acids and the production of proteins. And in other words, it's a, it's a much better way, this, this complex membrane system which sort of closes off the nuclear material of the cell 
actually allows the cell to better manage and process the genetic information within that cell. So we're going to come back to that, but that's really how they think that the, the membrane system evolved. And if you look at the structure of all these different membranes that we've talked about, the nuclear envelope, which surrounds the chromosomes, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, and the plasma membrane, if you look structurally at what those membrane systems look like, they're all the same. They have lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. So their structure is very, very similar. So it makes sense that they all evolve from some, from one system. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about this in just a moment.